Alright, so let's get to the latest on the Trump trials. Alright. A veteran tabloid publisher testified Tuesday that he pledged to be Donald Trump's eyes and ears during his 2016 presidential campaign, recounting how he promised the then-candidate that he would help suppress harmful stories and even arrange to purchase the silence of a doorman. And for those who aren't aware of that story, now this one is interesting because the doorman claimed that he had information about a illegitimate child that John, that Donald had with some woman, which it turned out was bogus. So, so yeah, um, I can see now that Donald went after, but then again, what does that say about him that he's had so many affairs that he can't even keep track and it's like, yeah, I'll just throw money at it to ensure that I'm not embarrassed. But I can see why people think that that might, that this stuff might be a lie as well. So anyway, continuing on. The testimony from David Pecker was designed to bolster the prosecution's premise of a decades-long friendship between Trump and the former publisher of the National Enquirer that culminated in an agreement to give the candidate's lawyer a heads-up on ne negative tips and stories so they could be quashed. The effort to suppress unflattering information was designed to illegally influence the election. Prosecutors have alleged in striving to elevate the gravity of the first trial of a former American president and the first of four criminal cases against Trump to reach a jury. Pecker is the first witness against Trump who faces 34 felony counts of falsifying business records in connection with hush money payments meant to prevent harmful stories from surfacing in the final days of the 2016 campaign. With Trump sitting just feet away in the courtroom, Pecker detailed his intimate behind-the-scenes involvement in Trump's rise from political novice to the Republican nomination and the White House. He explained how he and the National Enquirer parlayed rumor-mongering into splashy tabloid stories that smeared Trump's opponents and, just as crucially, leveraged his connections to suppress steamy stories, steamy stories about Trump, including a porn actor's claim of an extramarital sexual encounter a decade earlier. Pecker traced the origins of their relationship to a 1980s meeting at Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate in Palm Beach, Florida, and said the friendship bloomed alongside the success of the real estate developer's TV show The Apprentice and the program's subsequent celebrity version. Their ties were solidified during a pivotal August 2015 meeting at Trump Tower with, involving Trump, his lawyer and personal fixer, Michael Cohen, and another aide, Hope Hicks, in which Pecker was asked what he and the publications he led could do for the campaign. Pecker said he volunteered to publish positive stories about Trump and negative stories about his opponents, but that wasn't all. He said telling jurors how he told Trump, I will be your eyes and ears. Okay, let's stop there. First off, nothing wrong with using a publication to help a campaign with positive stories. Nothing wrong with that, even if it is a tablet. Nothing wrong with it. The negative stories, you know, that they make up just so they can smear people. That's where the problem comes. And the fact that he volunteered, this actually is helpful to Trump because Trump can say, oh, he offered to do this. I I wasn't going to ask him to do as, anything as seedy as, you know, smearing my opponents. So he just gave the Trump team an out. 
if any of them are smart enough to take it. And Pecker hasn't been prosecuted for anything, so I said that anything that I hear in the marketplace, if I hear anything negative about yourself or if I hear about women selling stories, I would notify Michael Cohen so that the rights could be purchased and the stories could be killed. So they would not get published, as the prosecutor Joshua Steinglass, so they would not get published, Pecker replied. To illustrate their point, prosecutors displayed a screenshot of various flattering headlines the National Enquirer published about Trump, including Donald Dominates and World Exclusive, The Donald Trump Nobody Knows. The jury was also shown disparaging and outlandish stories about Trump's opponents, including Surgeon Ben Carson and Republican Senator Marco Rubio. And yet... Both of them are singing Trump's praises, or at least they were when Trump was in office. Marco Rubio, I think, still does. <sighs> what the hell? It's like punching someone and saying, and them saying, thank you, sir, may I have another? Why? Pecker painted Cohen as a shadow editor of the National Enquirer's pro-Trump coverage, directing the tabloid to go after whichever Republican candidate was gaining momentum. I would receive a call from Michael Cohen, and he would direct me and direct Dylan Howard which candidate and which direction we should go, Pecker said, referring to the then tabloid's editor. Pecker said he underscored to Howard that the agreement with the Trump operation was highly, highly confidential. He said he wanted the tabloid's bureau chiefs to be on the lookout for any stories involving Trump and said he wanted them to verify the stories before alerting Cohen. So at least they're doing their due diligence. How the doorman story what became a thing when it turns out it wasn't true. Don't know. Um, I did not want anyone else to know this agreement I had and what I wanted to do, the ex-publisher added. Cohen pleaded guilty in 2018 to federal charges related to his role in the hush money payments. He was a once- he was once a confidant of Trump's, but their relationship deteriorated in spectacular fashion. Yeah, that'll happen when you turn on turn on someone. Yeah, that would happen. Cohen is expected to be a star government witness, and he routinely posts profane broadsides against Trump on social media. Trump's lawyers are expected to make a tax on Cohen's credibility, a foundation of their defense. But in opening with Pecker, prosecutors hope to focus attention on a witness with a less volatile backstory. Besides maintaining that Trump is innocent, Trump lawyer Todd Blanche told jurors that Cohen cannot be trusted and has an obsession with getting Trump. Right. Okay. Pecker's testimony Tuesday followed a hearing earlier in the day in which prosecutors urged Judge Juan Mershon to hold Trump in contempt and fine him $1,000 for each of 10 social media posts they say violated an earlier gag order barring attacks on witnesses, jurors, and other involved in the case. Mershon did not immediately rule, but he seemed skeptical of defense arguments that Trump was merely responding to, in his posts to others' attacks and had been trying to comply with the order. Um, if you're, if you're um, replying to someone you shouldn't be replying to, then no, you're not trying to comply with the order. Um, get some self-control, and this is coming from me who is not known for their self-control. I've gotten better, but, but yeah. Prosecutors allege 
that Trump sought to illegally influence the 2016 race through a practice known in the tabloid industry as catch and kill, catching a potentially damaging story by buying the rights to it and then killing it through agreements that prevent the paid person from telling the story to anyone else. In this case, that included a $130,000 payment to porn actor Stormy Daniels to silence her claims of an extramarital sexual encounter that Trump denies. Prosecutors also described other arrangements, including one that paid a former Playboy model $150,000 to suppress claims of a nearly year-long affair with the married Trump, which Trump also denies. And I still think she got shafted. Stormy got one hundred thirty thousand for one for one time, and for a nearly year long affair, it's only one hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that girl got shafted. In another instance, Pecker recounted a thirty thousand dollar payment from the National Enquirer to a Trump Tower doorman for the rights to a rumor that Trump had fathered a child with an employee at Trump World Tower. The tabloid concluded the story was not true, and the woman and Trump have denied the allegations. Oh, that's interesting. Even the woman denied it. Alrighty then. That's new. So, either that was made up of out of whole cloth, or the woman is also lying. Either one is entirely possible. As Pecker described receiving the tip in court, Trump shook his head. Pecker said upon hearing the rumor, he immediately called Cohen, who said it was absolutely not true, but that he would look into whether the people involved had indeed worked for Trump's company. I made the decision to purchase the story because of the potential embarrassment it had to the campaign and to Mr. Trump, Pecker said. In response to the prosecutor's question about who he understood the boss to be, Pecker replied, Donald Trump. Explaining why he decided to have the National Enquirer foot the bill, Pecker testified, This was going to be a very big story. I believed it was important that this story be removed from the marketplace. If he published the story, Pecker said, it would be probably the biggest sale of the National Enquirer since the death of Elvis Presley. Jurors viewed an internal Enquirer email and invoice describing the payments to the doorman to kill his story. One document described the funds coming from the publication's corporate account. An invoice references an immediate $30,000 bank transfer payment for Trump's non-published story. Trump's 34 felony counts arise from reimbursement that prosecutors say Trump's company made to Cohen for hush money payments and that were falsely recorded as legal expenses. You know, I wonder if that doorman knew of what was happening and just tried to cash in. Because why else would you make up a story out of old cloth? Anyway. The charges are punishable by up to four years in prison. Again, from what I've heard, that's four years per count. Not four years in total. But that's all I've been seeing. So maybe, maybe I'm missing something. Though it's unclear whether Mershon would seek to put him behind bars. A conviction would not preclude Trump from becoming president again. But because it is a state case, he would not be able to pardon himself if found guilty. He has repeatedly denied any wrongdoing. Now, um, first off, I, I'm kind of bummed that... Judge Mershon didn't actually um, rule on the gag order. Um, so, it's possible that he could seek jail time. Now, the question is, if that's what Trump wants, 
I highly doubt he wants to go to jail because this is Trump. But um, he probably does want him to rule against against him because that way he can whine some more to the press as as how he's such a poor persecuted person that nobody's ever been treated as badly as him because reasons because he's a raging narcissist uh let's see what else did i want to mention about this oh yeah um i have read that a good majority of people would not vote for trump if he was a convicted felon so hopefully that stays true and that if he's convicted that we wouldn't have to worry about um, Trump getting elected for a second term. So that's good. But um, I don't know. It's sort of like when um, in 2016, people thought, oh, there's no way that Trump's going to win because, you know, the polls are saying he's Hillary's leading and suddenly he won. And I think that was me mostly because people were embarrassed to, that people were embarrassed to um, admit that they were voting for Trump. And instead, it's possible that he, that, um, that it's a similar case, not, not as, um, not that the the polls right now show him leading, but that the people who are saying that they wouldn't vote for him if convicted simply don't want to admit that they don't care. I wonder how many of those people in that saying that they wouldn't vote for him if convicted actually would but they just are embarrassed to admit it. They don't want to admit it because they know that that's wrong, but they're going to do it anyway. They just don't want to admit it. So we'll just have to see how things go because I'm following the Electoral College based on poll averages. So far, not good. Not good. Trump is winning. So... Not thrilled about that, but hopefully as the trial progresses, people find out more and more about the charges, about the case, because let's face it, there are certain um, media organizations who have nothing better to do than to go over the minutia of this case to the detriment of anything else. So, who knows? Maybe this is, you know, maybe this will bite Trump in the ass. Or maybe people will feel sorry for him. Because, as we all know, rich people potentially going to jail is so common and so unfortunate. And, yes, that was sarcasm. So, yeah. Um, but that is all I have for this article. So, with that, I will see you guys in the next video.